Today's lesson is on 6.3, the percent equation. So make sure you're in your 6.3 notes. And I'd like you to write down this formula. Yesterday we did percent proportion. Is over of equals P over 100. If you would, put a red fluffy cloud and go ahead and put today's formula into it. P times of equals is. So here's the one important change you do want to know. With the percent before yesterday, we just put it into the fraction formula. For this one now, we have to change the percent to a what? To a decimal. That's something we've got to remember. Now, which one is the part? The is or the of? The is. And which one is the whole? The of. Okay, so we're going to use those to help us with our problems. Now you're going to see each of the problems we're doing are very similar to what we did yesterday with the percent proportion. So number one asks us to write and solve an equation to answer the question. Problem A says what number is 24% of 50? So we're going to separate it once again. This you can see is my is. This one I'm going to circle is my P for percent. And then I'm going to underline of 50. So if you would, make sure you're doing that in your notes also. Now we're going to start with our new formula from today. Everyone say this, P times of equals is. All right, so this is today's formula. This is the percent equation. The P, it's my percent. What does the percent say in the original problem? 24%. Now we have to change that to a decimal. What would that be? 0.24. So instead of P, we're going to put 0.24. Does the original problem tell us our of? Yes. What is it? 50. 50. So it says P times of, I'm going to go ahead and use parentheses, times 50. Equals, do we know our is? No. Notice I underlined, it says what number is. Since we don't know, we're just going to put an X. Now I'd like you to put that into your calculator. If we're practicing with calculators, you will also be able to use a calculator on a quiz or a test over this. What is 0.24 times 50? 12. 12, all right, 12 equals X. And if you wanna put the X first, you may. X equals 12, and that's our answer. Let's go on to the next one. What number is 150% of 40? What should I underline first, class? What number is, what should I circle? 150%. What's the next part? Of 40. of 40. Let's start with our original equation that we've learned or formula from today. Everybody, what is it? Excellent. What do I have to do to my P or to my percent? Change it to a decimal. So remember, with 150%, where is that imaginary decimal? Behind it. So we're going to move it over two places. And what are you left with? 1.5. Okay, 1.50. Or we just can do 1.5 because we don't need that zero that's at the end. Okay? Multiplied by the of. Trenton, what's my of? 40. And we don't know our is. Once again, you're just going to stick this into your calculator. 1.5 times 40. Hayden, what do you get? Sixty is correct. All right, and once again, we'll just go ahead and put the x first. X equals sixty is our final answer for problem B. We're going to do a few more examples just like this. Hope, help me to underline and circle this first part. Very good. Isaac, what's my formula for the percent equation? P times of equal is. Huang, plug it in for me, please. Um, okay, since we don't know the percentage yet, I'm actually just going to keep it as a P because that helps me to remember to turn it into a percent at the end. What's my of? And my is? Excellent. Matthew, how do I get P by itself? You are correct. Remember what you do to one side, you've got to do the other. So we're going to divide by 25 on both sides. The left side cancels out. Amira, what is my answer? Point 0.38. All right, so now as we go back to the original problem, it says 9.5 is what percent? 
of 25. So what do you think I have to do to point 38, class? Okay, move that decimal point two places to the right, and what will I get? 38% is correct. Always check to make sure it's got a percent sign if it's asking you for the percent. Moving on to the next one, to Leela. Will you please circle and underline the P, the of, and the is? And do what? Okay, so here's what's important to remember. You want each little section to have an is, an of, and a P. Do I have that with my first one that just says three? No. Is my three my is, my of, or my P? Can someone help her with that? How can I tell it's the is? Okay, it's right next to it. So instead what we want to do is actually extend three is, and then what percent? Okay, and now each of them has an is, an of, or a P. Gavin, what's my original formula? Excellent. Jalen, plug it in, plug it in. Okay, so I'm going to keep the P. The of, we're going to multiply it by 600, and you said the is is 3. Okay, Brayden, what should I do? Excellent. We're going to divide by 600 on both sides. And then put this part into your calculator. Remember, a lot of times people today have forgotten the numerator you punch in first, 3 divided by 600. All right, Noah, what'd you get? 200. Not 200. Like I just said, you need to put 3 divided by 600. You flipped it. You did 600 divided by 10. Okay, there you go. 0 0.005. Okay, which zero can I get rid of? The very first one. We don't need that. Okay, now I know that it's asking me for the percent. So what should I do with the decimal point? Move it two places to the right. And what am I left with? 0.5 percent. Very good. Problem E, very similar to the other ones. 39 is 52% of what number? Matthew, help me circle and underline the three different parts. Fantastic. Anar, what's my formula? And Angeline, plug it in, plug it in. What's my of? Look at what you underline that has the word of in it. Okay, that's correct. We want to put an X, and then what's our is? 39. Does anyone see something that should be changed? Gavin? No, because I plugged in X for of. There's something else that needs to be different. Hope? Very good. Remember, at the very top, it says we have to change our percent to a decimal. So instead of it saying 52, it should say 0.52. Okay, Anar, how do I get X by itself? Very good, divide by 0.52 on both sides. I want you guys to do that on your own and stand once you have the answer. Okay, very good, you guys got 75 and that is correct. Should I change that to a percent? No, up in the original problem it says 39 is 52% of what number, okay? Very good job.
I would like you guys to try to do the next one on your own. All right, as I walked around, I saw a lot of people with excellent work. Underlining 90 is, circling 180%, and of what number? We know P times of equals is. The people as they walked around and I saw that they missed something, guess what they missed? They forgot to change that percent to a decimal. What would 180% be as a decimal? 1.8. If you forgot to do that, just erase it and fix it for me, please. My of is an X equals 90. They need to divide by 1.8 on both sides. And when you do that, what do you get, class? 50. So X equals 50, and it asks us of what number. So we're going to keep it as the number and not put a percent sign. All right, next up, we've got some modeling real life. Your school raised 150% of its annual or of its fundraising goal, and the school raised a total of $8,000. We want to figure out not how much they raised, but what their goal was. So we're going to start with the same formula we've had all day. What's our formula, class? P times of equals is. All right, so we know to change the P to a decimal, but one of these is the part and one of them is the whole. If you flip back to the notes that we wrote at the very top of today's lesson, I want you to help me to understand which one's the part and which one's the whole or the total. Part is is, very good. So if you would, with your red pen, go ahead and write part. And the of is the what? It's the whole or the total. So now we're going to plug some things in. For the P, what will I plug in for my P? Not 150. 1.5. 1. 1. Okay, we're going to change that to a decimal. And now we're trying to figure out what was their whole goal. Do we know their goal yet? No. We do not know the goal. Okay, so we don't know the whole amount that they were trying to raise. Do we know the part or the is that they did raise? How much? $8,000. And now we're going to work it like a normal problem. Let's get X by itself. Gavin, how do I do that? Very good. We're going to divide by 1.5 on both sides so that that X can be all by itself. And this is going to tell us what their goal was. Who would like to help me with what their goal was? Noah, what'd you get? I got five, three, 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 three repeating. Okay, five, three, 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 and three repeating. Now, how many numbers do I need after the decimal point with dollars? Two. Two, okay? So instead of saying point three repeating, guess how many numbers I'm going to put there? Two. I'm going to put two of them there. So the correct answer is $5,333.33. Now let's see if this makes sense. They had a goal of this amount right here, but they raised this much. They wanted to get 100% of their goal. So they were hoping to get $5,333.33. Did they make that goal or did they exceed the goal? They exceeded, they exceeded it. So it tells us up here that they raised 150%. Does that make sense that that would be the answer? Because they exceeded it. It went well above their 100% goal. So our answer does make sense. Great job, guys, on our first modeling real life. Now we're going to do another modeling real life. You are paying for lunch, and you receive the following bill when you go to the 8th Street Cafe. Find the percent of sales tax on the food total. So we could see down here their food total was how much money? $27. $27.50, but they also had to pay tax. How much tax did they pay? $1.65. Now, I want to know what percentage that would be. So let's use our formula from today, P times of equals is. Just remind me, you don't have to write it down, but which one is the part, the of or the is? The is, and which one is the whole, the of or the is? The of, very good job. Okay, do we know the percent that we're trying to find yet? No, we do not. So we're going to keep it as P because that's what we're looking for. Do we know the whole amount that they paid just for the food? $29. Not how much did they pay with the tax. How much did they pay just with the food? $27.50. So we're going to have to multiply that times $27.50. Equals, as you guys just told me, the is right here is the part. 
The part that we're finding out here is the tax. So what part did they have to pay of tax, class? A dollar and 65 cents. Now our problem is worked just like every other problem. Get P by itself. Talila, how do I do that? Divide by? Good job. Divide by $27.50 on both sides. All right, so very good. He got 0 0.06. Which zero can I get rid of? The one at the very front, so I'm just going to let it go. Okay, now I know that I'm looking for percent, so what should I do with this? So just stick the percent sign there like that? Okay, remember from our lesson we learned in order to change something from a uh, decimal to a percent, you have to move the decimal point two places to the right. And so what is our answer? 6%. So they had a 6% sales tax. All right, so problem B says you leave a 16% tip on the food total. Find the total amount that you pay for lunch, including tax. Let's start with our formula we've had all day, the percent equation. What is that, class? Very good. Let's go ahead and put P times of equals is. Does it give us what percent we are leaving as a tip? 16%. What should I do to that? Turn it into a decimal. Turn it into a decimal, so 0.16. The of, is that the part or the whole? That's the whole. That's the whole. The of will always be our whole. What was the whole amount they spent on the food? $27.50. Oh. $27.50. That's what they spent on the food. So they are going to pay a tip on what they got for the food, not on what they paid with tax included. So the whole amount, $27.50 equals, that's what we're trying to figure out. This answer is going to give us the tip. So I want you guys to figure out how much you left for a tip. All right, can someone tell me what you got? What'd you get? Okay, 4.4. How would I write 4.4 as dollar sign and cents? You are correct, $4.40. And that is going to be our tip. Now that's not the final answer because this is what it asked us. Find the total amount that you pay for lunch, including the tax and including the tip. Okay, so basically we're going to be adding up the bill or the amount that we had for the food plus the tax plus the tip. I want you guys to try to do that on your own and see what you come up with as the total amount that you pay for lunch. All right, Huang, how much was the food total bill? $3.55. Okay, very good. So when we put the food total, it was $27.50. You got to add in your tax, which was $1.65, and then add in your tip, which is $4.40. And you are correct. He got $33.55. Did anyone else get the same thing? Excellent work. If you didn't, erase it and fix it, and let me know if you have any questions. So we're going to do just last couple of review problems here at the end. 14 is what percent of 70? What should I underline first? Um, 14, 14 is. 14 is. Circle. What, is what percent? And underline? Of 70. Of 70. What is my formula? P times. Excellent. What's my P? P. P. What's my of? 70. What's my is? 14. Trenton, how do I get P by itself? Divide by 70 on both sides. Hayden, what do you get when you divide by 70 on both sides? All right, 0 0.2. Which number can I get rid of? The zero. The zero. We don't need that zero, okay? Am I done? No. Two places to the right. What do I put in the little scoop? Add a zero, what's the answer? 20%. 20%. I want everyone to do problem two on their own. Remember, you want to circle and underline the three different parts and always start by writing your formula. All right, as I walked around, I saw a lot of people with this answer. Raise your hand if you got 3,060. Okay, and then I saw a lot of people with this answer, 30.6. Raise your hand if you got 30.6. Okay, hands are down. 
let's talk about there's one difference as to why you would get one of those two different answers. What do I have to do to my percent? Change it to a decimal. If you forgot, then you probably ended up with the wrong answer. You've got to change it to 0.36. Our of is 85, and that's going to equal our is. If you did it that way, what's your answer? 30.6. Okay, so if you did not get that, erase it. Make sure you put in this. You've got to change it to a decimal point, or you will get a wrong answer. Okay, for the final two problems, this is from review a long time ago. Find the distance between the two numbers on a number line. So when doing a problem like this, if you want to, you can draw out a number line. You don't always necessarily have to. Some people know how to do it without using the number line. But if you want to, you can use a number line like this. I want you to find problem A's answer. You're trying to find the distance between 4 and 9 on the number line. Who knows what it is? A 5. How'd you get that? Okay, so she said she started here at the 4, trying to get to the 9. She knows she has to hop 1, oops, sorry. <laughs> she has to hop 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 times. Now, if I did not want to do it with a number line, how would I do that? How do you do it in your head? Okay. You would take the biggest number. What's the bigger number, 4 or 9? Nine? 9. 9. And you would subtract the smaller number, which is 4. four. Guys, what's 9 minus 4? Five. 5. So you would get the same thing either way. I want you guys to try problem B on your own. All right, as I just walked around, I saw two very different answers. Many people got a 5, and many people got a 9. Raise your hand if you got either a 5 or a 9. Okay, hands are down. So here's the deal. If I wanted to do this, you guys can have a seat. If I wanted to do this on a number line, and I go from a negative 2, and I hop all the way over to a 7, how many hops will that take me? 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If you did not want to write out a number line, what could you do? Not add. You take the biggest number, which is 7, and then you subtract the smallest number, which is negative 2. A lot of people just said 7 minus 2. That would give you 5. But if you do 7 minus negative 2, which is what's there, what do I have here? A double negative, which turns into a, a monster positive. So I would do 7 plus 2, and the answer is... Nine. Okay, so today on your homework, you're going to have a problem similar to that, which is why I wanted to do a review problem with you. Are there any questions about how to find the distance between two numbers? All right, for today, if you would, go ahead and write down tonight's homework. It is 6.3. You're going to put it on big ideas um, and also on paper.